Hi, I'm Paymon from the Technical Support Department here at VTech. Today, I'll be going over how you can wire and install a CSG110 amplifier module. So let's take a look at the CSG110. On the back of your lid of your CSG110, you can find the default switch configurations for your CSG110. The CSG110 also contains one male and one female DB9. The male DB9 is used for your voltage input and also the voltage output is read from the same side. The female side of the DB9 is used for your sensor's input. Switch 1 is used for your excitation. Switch 2 is used for your polarity. And switch 3 is used for your gain settings. Switch 5, 6, and 7 are used for your current settings. The CSU-110 comes with a zero pot and a span pot. Also, the shunt button is located here in white. I'm going to take the DB9 connector and screw it in tightly. Now I'm going to apply some flux to pins 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now I'm going to take my red plus excitation and solder it onto pin number 1. Also keep in mind the pin numbers are labeled on the DB9. Next I'm going to take my plus signal in green and solder it onto pin number 2. Now I'm going to take my white minus signal and solder it onto pin number 3. And finally, I'll take my black minus excitation and solder it onto pin number 4. Now I'm going to take the bottom of my DB9 and my DB9 connector and set it in. I'm going to push in my wire inside the bottom of the DB9 cover and put on the DB9 cover top. Now I'm going to open the hole. Since I want to put in my DB9 screw, I'm going to put the cover washer on and insert the DB9 screw in there and insert the DB9 screw in the washer into the DB9 hole. I'll do the same the opposite side. Next to the bottom cover, I'll apply the screws and the washer to the top. And using a screwdriver, I'll tighten the screws from the bottom. Lastly, I'm going to set the screw into the connector hole. Just screw it in, in order to hold the cable tight. And push it in tightly, in order for all the connections to take place. In order to have a more secure connection and do it for both sides and we're good to go so now I'll be explaining how to set up a CSG 110 system for voltage output 
The output of the CSG110 will be a product of the sensor's output in millivolts per volt, the excitation used from the CSG110, and the gain in the CSG110. The product of the mentioned components should result in an output range close to either plus and minus 10 VDC or plus and minus 5 VDC. To set up your sensor for voltage output, you must know two things. One is the excitation level from the CSG110 and the other is the sensor's full scale millivolt per volt output. The millivolt per volt output of your sensor can be found on its calibration certificate. You can find your sensor's calibration data on our FUTEC website. Here, simply enter in your sensor's 5 digit serial number and then click the green submit button. There are two excitation levels available for your, the CSG110 controlled by dip switch 1 also known as the excitation dip switch. Using the dip switch you can choose up for 5 VDC excitation or down for 10 VDC excitation. By default the CSG110 comes with 10 VDC excitation. So now we'll be setting up the gain. And here you can see under related documents there's a gain settings. If you click the gain settings you can download the file and use it. Once you have downloaded the gain settings spreadsheet you can come and specify your excitation your sensor's millivolt per volt output found on your sensor's calibration certificate, the lower and upper limits. Note that the upper limit will adjust automatically. The upper limit is used because the gain should place the output of your sensor and the CSG110 between the lower limit and the upper limit, allowing you to find adjust the output using the span to potentiometer on the CSG110. From our gain setting spreadsheet, we found in order to get 10 VDC out, we have to flip switch 4 off, switch 5 and 8 on. Now after configuring the appropriate gain dip switch configuration for your needs, we can now start adjusting the span and zero potentiometers. At this point we will have our sensor and CSG110 fully wired up with the power applied to the CSG110. So first, with no load on the sensor, adjust the zero potentiometer to as close to zero as possible using a screwdriver. Next, apply a no load to your sensor and let it settle. It's ideal to use the sensor's full capacity when setting up the span and output for best accuracy. Adjust the span accordingly to get as close to the amount of voltage that is appropriate for the level of load as possible. Now it's a good idea to remove the load and go back and reconfirm your zero. And then go back and reconfirm your span output as well. Once both points are satisfactory, the voltage calibration is complete. It is important to note that the output voltage is passed through a current converting phase. As a result, the steps to set up the voltage output will be needed in setting up a current output. The additional steps for current are to configure dip switches 5, 6, and 7 for the desired current output and range. The output ranges are from 0 to 16, 0 to 20, 4 to 20, and 5 to 25 milliamps. In the CSG110 manual, you can find a table to show the current output based on dip switches 5, 6, and 7, and as the table shows, are based on what the output voltage is from the CSG110. After configuring the appropriate gain dip switch configuration for your needs, we can now start adjusting the span and zero potentiometers. At this point we will have our sensor and CSG110 fully wired up with the power applied to the CSG110. Using a screwdriver, adjust the zero potentiometer to as close to the zero load as possible. Next, apply a no load to your sensor and let it settle. It's ideal to use the sensor's full capacity when setting up the span and output for best accuracy. Adjust the span accordingly to get as close to the amount that is appropriate for the level of load as possible.
Now it's a good idea to remove the load and go back and reconfirm your zero, and then go back and reconfirm your span output as well. When shunting, an internal resistor in the CSG110 is placed across the sensor in such a way that the sensor and shunt stimulate an output. The CSG110 comes default with a 60.4 kilo ohm resistor that produces about 72% of the sensor's full output for most of our sensors which have a 350 ohm bridge resistance. This should produce a voltage output of about 7.2 VDC out of a full 10 volt range. Here you can enter your sensor's bridge resistance and your desired millivolt per volt output to calculate your shunt resistor required. Or here you can click output to use your sensor's bridge resistance and your shunt resistance to calculate your output. Now adjust the no load state using the zero potentiometer. After you have done that, hold down the shunt button and while holding down, adjust the span potentiometer to the appropriate output level for the shunt. For more information and support about the CSG110 and its wiring guides, please go to our website at www.futech.com forward slash support.